Right, guys, here we go. Number seven on the list of the NF... I've done it again. The NBA top 30 players of all time, Larry Bird. Uh, the only time I've actually seen Larry Bird is on a video game in the um, the 1970s to 80s uh, Boston Celtics fucking um, uh, retro team. I don't know what... Look. Was it NBA 2K3? Was it NBA 2K6? Was it NBA 98? I don't know. Either way, I have played with him before. And uh, look, the only thing that really comes to mind is a three-point shot. I feel like he was about six foot seven to six foot nine, and the fact that he was a white boy shooting threes like he did at that height, I don't know if he had crossovers, I don't know what he did, I don't know if he could dunk the ball. All of them more will be revealed. We'll be watching him. We will be watching him until we are impressed. But prior to getting into the video, we're going to have a wee bit of a blurb here. Number seven on the list, Boston's had more than its fair share of Hall of Famers roll through the old Boston Garden. But nobody was as lethal a scorer or as clutch at the end of games like Larry Legend. So he couldn't just shoot a three, but he could also shoot it at the, at the best of times. A three-time champion who won three consecutive MVPs in the mid-80s. And obviously made the NBA's 75th anniversary team. Bird knocked down daggers like it was nothing and loved ripping out the hearts of his rivals. Uh, while, ta while talking some of the most underrated trash. Oh, I like that. One of the greatest what-ifs in NBA history revolves around Bird's back that he infamously injured while paving his mother's driveway <laughs> during the summer of 1985. If Bird wasn't Mr. DIY, it's staggering to think what else he could have done since he was never quite the same after that and horribly ho hobbled his final few years in the league. You're kidding me! Paving his mother's driveway... Fucked his back for life. Oh no. There you go. That, that, that just goes to show, you know, if you're on fucking 10, 20 million a year, don't pff, just pay someone. Pay someone to do it. But it didn't stop him from averaging 24.3 points per game and 10 rebounds per game for his 13 seasons. So he was a double double. Bird filled up a box score, but he was never strictly a, a numbers guy. He was just a winner who made ridiculous passes, had a knack for seeing everything unfold seconds before anyone else on the court, and always made the key play that either sealed the deal or keyed a game-defining run. That's why even though he could barely get loose enough to play at the end of his final season, Bird was one of the most celebrated members of the legendary Dream Team. The mid-80s, the Dream Team was in 1992, so he still played a, a definitive role within the Dream Team. There was no way the greatest basketball squad ever assembled could leave off the greatest small forward the game had ever known at that point. So I'm going to say that his play during the 91-92 season probably, you know, wasn't wasn't the best. He was he, he might have been, you know, nearing the end of his career, but he still, I mean, due to his um, due to his uh, well. His career, his numbers, he was still included in the team and he did play a definitive role. There was no way the greatest basketball squad ever assembled could leave off the greatest small forward the game had ever known at that point. Bird's been supplanted by someone else on that mythical list. But the hick from French Lick is forever a legend. The greatest small forward the game has ever known. Right, so who's the greatest small forward the game has ever known at this point? I'm going to say it's Kobe. Either way, guys, let's go to YouTube. Let's write in Larry Bird highlights. Take the first video off the list. Sorry, Larry. Getting ahead of myself here. Oh, my God. What am I fucking doing? Sorry, guys. Larry Bird. <laughs> I'm so excited. I want to get to the fucking... I want to get to the top five. It's going to be incredible. Larry Bird ultimate mixtape. Boom. Until we're impressed. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen. 1993. The year after... The 1992 Olympics. He's about to retire. I feel like I'm there. I feel like I'm there. He was the most motivated player I ever saw. Ah! <laughs> I thought he was going to get it, surely. Fuck, if he had a, if he had a got that back in to, to the field of play, I reckon we would have cut this video right here, right now. But I, I feel like this guy's name is... Um, it's not Ray Allen, it's Reggie Miller. Is one of the biggest trash talkers ever. One of the biggest trash talkers ever. Well, he doesn't look like it. Oh, are you kidding me? 
A pass under the legs? No, I haven't seen that before. I haven't seen that before. I want to see a three-pointer, but I really want to cut this off because that is extremely impressive. But let's continue. I've never seen that before in my entire life. As his calling card, and if you believe that for one second, oh, you mate. Get beaten. Just drains them, eh? Drains them for fun, and he can dunk. Oh, he's got a bit of a crossover. Oh, a bit of an up and under. Look at that. Oh! I want to see a three-pointer, for God's sake. Everything's in the paint. I need a... Th oh. Well, he broke ankles for fun back then, didn't he? Have a look at him. Short, short to net. Short, short to null. Oh, through the legs again. Look, guys, we haven't even seen a three-pointer, but I've seen enough. I've seen more than enough. And with that in mind, I'll see you in the next one. The title of this video is for a reason. Watching him until I'm impressed. If you're not impressed, well, you're not human.